Hello, welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection. Today we're pouring some hot sugar and we're going to be making some image candy for Christmas. We're making Santa hats, Christmas trees, and little presents, all in an assortment of different flavors. We're mixing in red and green food coloring, and we're stirring it into the hot sugar to boil out all the water in the food coloring for our Christmas trees. The flavor is peppermint. It only takes a few minutes on our 150-year-old candy cooling table for all the temperatures to start evening out and for us to be able to cut the candy. We then need to fold the candy to even the temperature out throughout each color. Our palette is three colors today. Green, red, and white. The green and red look pretty good, but the white needs some work. It looks kind of yellow now. And we fix that by pulling the candy on our candy hook. Maggie pulls the candy 75 times, and each pull traps millions of air bubbles in. These little air bubbles each reflect light, and eventually, the candy will reflect so much light, it will look white. The first thing we're doing is making Christmas ornaments. The Christmas ornaments are going to be red, and we are making round red cylinders that are going to go through the image candy. These have to be very, very cold to keep their shape through the whole process. Temperature control is critical for making these designs in candy. We make the tree from a strip of green candy that's been sandwiched between two strips of white candy. The ornaments are inserted as we fold it back and forth, making a zigzag for the tree to make an effect like a pen stroke on a piece of paper. We've wrapped our tree design with white candy to space it out, and now it's time to do final assembly by wrapping it with the green outer wrap. Now it's time to scale down this giant log of candy into a thousand bite-sized pieces. This is a little trickier than some of our designs because we have to start with a larger diameter than we're used to. It means more gentle working of the design down to its final diameter. We separate the rod from the log, pass it on, and it gets rolled. The rolling action keeps the candy from going flat. It may look like the candy is fairly solid at this point, but it still very much behaves like a slow-flowing liquid. It is a non-Newtonian fluid, after all. If we leave it alone, it'll go flat, so we have to keep it moving and rolling at all times until the candy hits its final temperature and is cool. Once the candy rods become cool enough, we can start cutting it into pieces. The candy becomes hard enough that it'll shatter like glass if we do it wrong, but if we strike it against a sharp edge just right, it'll cut into a perfect piece. And now we pour for the second of our three designs. This one's a picture of a present. It's eggnog flavored, and it will be blue and red. Joran pours the color in and works it in, boiling out the excess water. Once again, the background's going to end up as being white, and Nick here is going to pull it to trap air bubbles in and to turn the amber into a lovely white. The instruments you may see on the wall, like this Dr. Sousaphone, are not just there for show. Lofty Pursuits has a marching band that marches several times per year and wins awards all over the region. Jaron Paul's part of the blue candy into some of the white candy to make a light opaque blue for the present. Jaron shapes a piece of red candy to go down the middle of the present, while Nick starts making the bows for the top of the present. Two cylinders that'll become the bows go on top, then the candy is wrapped with the rest of the white candy that we have, and a blue and red wrap is put around it. The candy is then pulled into lots. Now that the presents are wrapped, it's time to cut them.
shack till that mail train comes back. Keep in mind when we're pouring our third batch that it's taking about two minutes here in the video to show you each batch, and it takes us between an hour and 15 and an hour and 45 minutes each to make them. Nick pulls the candy on our candy hook about 75 times to take it from amber to white. The hat is made from three basic shapes. A triangle for the body, a circle of red that's filled with white for the pom-pom at the top, and a white piece that's wrapped in red for the fringe at the bottom. The hats are wrapped in white, then red, then pulled from a log into a rod and rolled until they're cool. And finally, the rods are cool enough to be cut on the anvil, and our Christmas assortment is done. This is all made in Tallahassee, Florida, and you can come and see it in person if you ever come to Tallahassee. You can also get the candy on the web at www.pd.net. Thank you for watching.